My name is Christabel and we're on Olai. I'll be taking you through this session on newborn examination. Before we start with the practical demonstration on newborn examination, it is important to stress that this procedure is very important and is a skill that all medical practitioners must acquire. A newborn, it's a baby aged from birth to 28 days. However, this does not mean that procedures involved in the examination of the newborn are restricted to this age group. This is because in our countries, the developing countries, many babies are born at home and many more are born in health facilities where there are no medical practitioners. So it is very important that the first time an infant has a clinical encounter with a medical practitioner, that infant should be examined thoroughly as if it was a newborn examination. A newborn baby should be examined immediately after birth in the labor room by a health care worker. This first examination is to identify any life-threatening problems and to manage them as rapidly as possible. Every newborn should have a thorough clinical examination within 24 to 72 hours after birth by a skilled healthcare worker, preferably a medical doctor. And this examination should be done in the presence of the parents. Both parents preferably, but definitely the mother. Ideally, this examination should be repeated again at the age of four to eight weeks. A thorough physical examination is a human right of the newborn. It is a legal and ethical requirement of babies delivered in health facilities. It ensures early identification and management of illnesses and also any identified congenital abnormalities. Newborn examination is important. It gives assurance to parents and it promotes maternal infant bonding and is useful to encourage good parenting. As everything in medicine, newborn examination should start with a thorough history. You should know about the mother's medical and past obstetric history, family and social history, the history of the infant's pregnancy, the labor and the delivery, and also the infant's clinical history up till the time of the examination. The universal standards for clinical examination apply to the newborn, namely observation, palpation, percussion, and auscultation. Examination of the newborn um, requires that the medical practitioner uses his initiative to know what to do first, depending on the state of the baby. The state and whether the baby is sleeping, the baby is crying, or the baby is awake, alert, and looking at you and being very cooperative. Your power of observation is very important. You need to observe the baby's movements, the size, the symmetry of activities, the color, the, the posture, and everything that the baby does. Babies give away a lot by the way they behave when you are observing them. The equipment you require to examine a newborn are a tape measure to measure the head circumference, a thermometer to check the temperature, your stethoscope to auscultate the heart and the abdomen or any masses you might notice on the during the process of the examination, a light source to be able to look at the palate and the um, external auditory meters and an ophthalmoscope to check for the red reflex. 
you should have already weighed the baby to know the baby weight with the weighing scale and you also need a measuring an infant measuring mat to check the baby's length while you're observing a baby as the mother undresses the baby and the baby is lying and you're looking at the baby the color of the baby will give you a lot of information about the state of health the movements will tell you about the tone the muscular tone and the baby's maturity and activity and the baby's neurological status whether they're symmetrical or asymmetrical by just observing a baby you can check the cranial nerves and we will demonstrate this after the examination you must make sure that you communicate all the findings to the mother if the baby if everything during the physical examination is normal reassure parents that everything is normal and tell them the importance of coming for follow-up um, reviews neurodevelopmental check to make sure the baby achieves the milestones if there are any abnormalities you also have to communicate this to the mother or the, or the parents. You must communicate it appropriately. One, if you found something that you're not very sure of, whether it is normal or not, do not tell the parents that this is abnormal. It is okay to tell them that this might not be normal, but we need to examine the baby again, or somebody who is more experienced will examine the baby again. If something is definitely abnormal, you also have to show the parents what is abnormal and let them know what can be done about it so that together they will work with you to sort out whatever the abnormality is. Another thing I will mention at this stage is that when you the best place to examine a newborn will probably be in the mother's arms because if the baby is sucking and in mother's arms it's unlikely to be uncomfortable or to start crying. But it's not every procedure that you can do properly in a mother's arms. So it is preferred that for a thorough examination, you examine the baby on a firm, warm surface where you can be able to look at every aspect of the baby. The thorough examination of a newborn baby should be done in the presence of both parents, preferably both parents, but at least the mother. It should be done in a warm, well-lit room. And you should be able to show the parents all the, all the normal things the baby is doing. And if there are any abnormalities, that should also be shown to the parents. Your hands must be thoroughly washed and warm. Examining a newborn should not be an unpleasant experience for the baby and the parents. Examination of the newborn requires very good skills in observation because the newborn baby will usually manifest all the signs you need to see. So you start with observation. When you observe the baby, you look for the size of the baby, the color. This baby is nice and pink. The extremities are pink. All the extremities are nice and pink. You look at the lips, it is pink. Then you look at the baby's posture. This baby is very well flexed. And as you see him moving around, you will notice that even the upper limbs are quite well flexed. Also observe for spontaneity in movements. Normal newborns will spontaneously move all their limbs and their body in a symmetrical fashion as you can see this baby moving. You look at his facial expressions. When you're looking at facial expressions, you can identify a lot of problems. I must at this point tell you that examination of the newborn usually will not take the systematic approach in adults where you do one system at a time. It is very, very opportunistic. When this baby is yawning or crying, that is when you look at the face and look out for signs of facial nerve palsy. When the baby is yelling is also when you look out to see if the palate is normal. When the baby opens the eyes, that will be the right time to examine the eyes. So, 
it doesn't matter which system you want to use or what method you want to use. The most important thing is that when you're examining a newborn, you must examine from the hair, the hair on the head, to the toenail. Every part of the baby must be thoroughly examined. If we start with this baby's head, you can see that the hair looks normal, it's dark. The hairline is normal. You look at the back of the hair, it's also normal. Then you feel the head. You feel the anterior frontal. It is nice and soft. Ideally, you should measure it, but this one takes about one and a half finger breadth of my index finger, which is normal. Then you run your fingers along, along the sagittal suture, and you follow it up right to the posterior frontal, which is here in this baby. You should also feel the rest of the head to find out if there are any abnormal closures, early closures of the sutures. The suture line here, the coronal suture, you can feel it gently. The lambda suture, you can follow it from the posterior frontal, it feels normal. You also feel to see if there's any overriding of the sutures. And you have to check on both sides. At all times, making sure that the baby is comfortable. Then, you look at the ears. Is the ear well formed? Does it recoil normally, as in this child? Is there a normal canal inside? As you can see in this particular baby, the canal is there. You must check both sides. Calls normally in this full term baby and the ear canal is normal. When you look at the face sheets, this you would have done while you were examining the baby, but now you're doing it systematically. These babies' face sheets are normal. The proportions of different aspects of the face are within normal limits. The forehead is not protruding, the eyes. They are well slanted, they are normally slanted. The nasal bridge is normal for an African child. You look at the nose and you make sure that they are patterned. Now the baby, like I said, this baby is demonstrating the rooting reflex. Now watch this. Stops. If he does it again, we'll start. We'll start again. Okay. Then you look at the eyebrows. The eyebrows are normal. You look at the distance between the distance between the eyes. They are normal. The nose is normal. The philtrum is the length of the philtrum is within normal limits. The lips are normal. The chin is of a good size. The cheeks are normal. Now is the time to examine the inside of the mouth. You do that with gloves. With your gloved hands. First, you look at the mouth. We'll have another look when the baby is crying or when he opens his mouth. But you can, you must look and feel the palate. In this baby, the palate is normal, but the same process of checking for the palate is also the process of checking that the baby has a normal sucking reflex. And as you can see, during the suck, this baby's eyes are wide open. And that is the time to look at the baby's eyes, see if there are any white patch in the pupil, like cataracts or congenital retinoblastoma. It's also the time for you to look at the 
retina for the red reflex. Usually you will do this with the lights turned off so that you can see the red reflex. Now while this baby is sucking my fingers, it's not going to cry. And this is the time for me to do all the things I need to do with the baby quiet, like listening to the heart. You must make sure that your stethoscope is not cold. You warm it up, make sure it's warm enough, and then you examine the baby. We'll go on and palpate later, but baby is quiet. So you must listen to the four vital areas of the heart. sounds are normal, there are no added sounds. Then you listen to the long fields because he's quiet. 